Okay, you've heard me say it before, so I'm going to say it again. California, it's an expensive place to live. We've all heard it before. The expense is one of the reasons that people are considering or have already left California. More than 20 years ago, a portion of my own family left the Bay Area for a new state, and recently a few friends have headed that way as well. It's a city known as the City of Trees. It has several outdoor attractions and a rich history. The area was originally started by fur trappers and then became a gold hot spot. Now it's known for great food, arts, cultural events, and growing attractions. What city am I talking about? If you guessed Boise, Idaho, you're right. In recent years, Boise has become a destination for Californians looking to relocate out of state. One major reason is Boise is a very affordable place to live as far as major cities go. Although this past year, the prices have increased quite a bit. Whether you're thinking about moving to Boise or just planning to visit, according to lifepile.com, Boise is an extremely family-friendly place to live. Some family-friendly attractions in the area include the zoo, the Idaho State Historical Museum, Botanical Garden, Roaring Springs Water Park, Discovery Center of Idaho, and the old Idaho Penitentiary. Really? Family-friendly. Okay. I'm going to have to look more into that. Sounds kind of funny. Now, if you're a foodie, Boise won't disappoint in that area either. Some top food choices you're not going to want to miss are Bitter Creek Ale House, Luciano's Italian, Goldie's Chandler's Steakhouse, and Big Judd's. And of course, Idaho is known for its potatoes. So don't forget to check out one of the potato-based restaurants like Westside Drive-In, Pie Hole, or the Goodwood Barbecue Company. So enough about all there is to do in Idaho. If you're considering moving, you're probably more interested in things that will help you make that decision. So let's start by comparing the cost of groceries. Okay, so I went online and I compared groceries in Boise at their local Kroger's versus Knob Hill here in Livermore, California. So to compare the prices, I compared a loaf of bread. It's $3.49 in Livermore and $2.50 in Boise. Frozen hash browns, $3.99 in Livermore, $2.79 in Boise. Bag of Doritos, actually the same at $3.99. Butter, $4.99 in Livermore versus $3 in Boise. Wow, cheddar cheese, $3 in Livermore and $3.50 in Boise. That might not work out too well for me since I really like cheese. Eggs, $3.69 in Livermore and $1.99 in Boise. That is a good deal. Milk. $4.79 4.79 in the Bay Area in Livermore, 3.38 in Boise. Broccoli, not too much of a difference. $1.84 in Livermore and $1.34 in Boise. Apples, $1.25 each in Livermore versus 90 cents each in Boise. Pounded boneless skinless chicken breasts are 6.49 in Livermore versus 3.49 in Boise. And oh, this one's surprising. Tri-tip. $17.24 in Livermore versus $24.51 in Idaho. Why is it so much more in Idaho? I'm curious about that. Bacon, $6.99 versus $5.99. So overall, it's 8.8% less to buy groceries in Idaho versus the Bay Area of California. Now, if you're a California family, say spending $800 a month on groceries, that's $9,600 a year. You can expect that your grocery bill will go down a bit living in Boise by 8.8%. And you could see a savings of $675 a year. So in groceries, ding, 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 Boise wins. So you're leaving California and you're going to sell your house and you're going to buy a new one in the Boise area. So I compared a house in Livermore, California to a similar house in Meridian, Idaho, which is really close to Boise. So I compared a four bedroom, two bath, approximately 2,100 square feet on a 7,000 square foot lot. In Livermore, that home would cost $1,399,000 as of this recording. You can get a very similar home in Meridian, Idaho for $550,000. So there's no doubt that housing is cheaper in Meridian, Idaho, which is near Boise. In fact, $849,000 less. That is quite a savings. So how much are property taxes in Idaho? Well, I couldn't find any clear answers or exact numbers, and it was actually kind of frustrating. I will admit that I was actually happy when I came across this article that was titled Inside Idaho's Complicated Property Tax System, because apparently I'm not the only one who has struggled to understand it and find this information. But 
I did find this statement on smartasset.com. Quote, taxes on real estate in Idaho are relatively low in comparison with the rest of the country. So I'm just going to take their word for it and guess that it's going to be less than California property tax because I couldn't find anything for certain anyway. Certainly should be lower when considering the price of the house is so much less, but percentage wise, I can't say for sure. I did find a lot of information on the county website. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description below. So on property taxes, I'm going to give it to Idaho, maybe, probably. All right, moving on. Homeowners insurance. So I ran a quote online with Lemonade.com and Zebra.com. Homeowners insurance quote for a Livermore home, that same Livermore home with four bedrooms, two baths, was $68 a month versus the Meridian Idaho home at $50 a month. So homeowners insurance will cost less in Meridian, Idaho. However, percentage wise, it doesn't seem like it's that much less because you're in in California, you're insuring a $1.4 million house versus a $500,000 house in Meridian, Idaho. And the price difference of the insurance isn't that significant. But anyway, it's still cheaper regardless. So I'll give that to Idaho. Next on my list was state income tax. So Idaho does have state income tax and it ranges from 1% up to 6%. According to the website tax.idaho.gov, Idaho taxes higher earnings at a higher rate, sort of like a sliding scale fee for state income tax. Now, if you're retired or close to retiring, you'll be interested to know that according to smartasset.com, social security income is not subject to state income tax for Idaho residents, but other forms of retirement income, such as withdrawals from your 401k or withdrawals from your IRA are taxed. With a sliding tax rate maxed out at 6%, Idaho income tax will cost you less in California income tax. So Even though it's a sliding scale fee and it does go up to 6%, still the winner here is Idaho. So what about medical insurance? If you move, you'll still need medical insurance and it can vary so much from state to state. According to a website, ehealthinsurance.com, Idaho health insurance premiums start at $74 per month. In California, this website quotes the premium starting at $187 a month. Now, I don't know anyone in California who pays only $187 a month for health insurance, but this is just the starting rate on that website. Honestly, it's a lot more than that to get any kind of decent coverage, but just comparing these starting premiums, it's clear that health insurance is more affordable in Idaho. What about gas prices? Okay, so here we are. On The next thing that's a basic thing that we all use and need is gas. Gas prices, according to GasBuddy.com, the price for a gallon of gas at the time of this recording is $4.25 a gallon in Livermore, California versus $3.59 a gallon in Meridian, Idaho. I have to admit, I thought it was going to be a lot cheaper than that in Idaho. It is more affordable, but just not as big of a difference as I was expecting. So gas prices still go to Idaho. Just not that big of a difference. So what about registering your car? How much will it cost you to register your car in Idaho? Well, according to the Idaho DMV website, a basic annual registration will cost you just $69 for a vehicle that's one to two years old. And the older your car is, the cheaper the registration will get. However, if you drive an electric vehicle, it's actually going to cost you $140 more than the basic fee. Now, I know from personal experience, registration for my 2021 vehicle was about six or $700 here in California. So even with the electric vehicle surcharge in Idaho, car registration is a bargain. Now I'm assuming there's no extra things on added onto that. I couldn't find any extra fees above what was quoted on that main DMV page, but if you wanna check it out, I'll put a link to the Idaho DMV website below. You can search for it yourself. Now, what about sales tax? How does sales tax compare between Livermore, California and Meridian, Idaho? I don't think that it will surprise anyone to know that the Bay Area has higher sales tax. Sales tax in Livermore is currently 10.25%, while Meridian, Idaho is at 6%. So clearly the winner on sales tax is Idaho. Now, what if you're thinking about moving, but you don't own a house and you're not planning to buy one? So let's take a look at how much it costs to rent a basic apartment. The average rent in Livermore for an average apartment is $2,137 a month compared to the average rent of a similar sized apartment in Meridian, Idaho at just $1,352 a month. 
So if you're renting and you're living in Meridian, you will save about $9,400 a year. So on renting a home, winner, Idaho. But that's not the only financial comparison that we need to be making. It's pretty clear that in Meridian, Idaho versus Livermore, California, it will save you money on your cost of living. But what if you don't make the same wage? Let's compare the median income. So let's take the median income into consideration and reevaluate. According to datause.io, the median household income in Livermore, California is $127,452 a year versus just $71,389 in Meridian, Idaho. That's a difference of $56,076 a year in income. Now, everyone's financial situation is going to be different. If you're moving to retire, then the median income probably doesn't matter as much to you as it would to someone who's going to be working for 10 or 20 more years until they retire. This is a piece of the decision making process that I think a lot of people leave to chance. They don't think about it thoroughly, hoping it will just work out. And I want to encourage you to not do that. Don't just hope. If you have a decade or more left of income earning years, I strongly suggest that you do the research and find out how much your income may decrease if you were to move. And don't forget to also find out how much demand there is for someone in your line of work. So find out if there's just one job opportunity, five job opportunities, many job opportunities. What if you don't like the job opportunity and it was the only one out there? Or it doesn't work out for whatever other reason. And you want to be sure that there are other opportunities for employment, making the same money that you would expect to live in Idaho. If there's not, it won't matter how much less the cost of living is if you don't have income at all or your income is significantly reduced. I have seen it happen to many people, many people, friends, family. It's happened. I've witnessed it. It hasn't been good. They move thinking that they'll keep the job that they have. Their current boss has said, sure, work from home, no problem. But within a couple of years, even sometimes less than that, that arrangement is no longer working. Either the employer changes their mind, something just goes wrong. I know some who have had to fly back and forth across a few states each week, going back to the area where they left just to keep income flowing in. I admire the determination that they had to make it work no matter what the cost, and do whatever they had to do for their family. But I know having that kind of commute can't be easy. Going to the airport, getting on the plane, flying somewhere, sleeping sometimes on friends' couches for five days until you can fly back home for only two days. So I want to encourage you. I want to ask you, just really, really think this part through. Make sure you crunch the numbers and make sure you have a plan B. If you have to get on that plane every week, you're going to feel like it costs you big time. Whatever money you saved on cost of living, it's going to feel like you spent it in quality of life. And that is not a fun position to be in. So if you're thinking about relocating and leaving the Bay Area, I am happy to help you sell your California home. And I can connect you with a great agent in your new city as well. I'm Maria Dior. I'm a real estate agent in the San Francisco Bay Area, and I'll see you in my next video.